Sure you do. Rock stars, Eric Andre is here. And today we are going to be leveling up our soloing. That's right. Uh, welcome to the guitar show. We're having a blast here. We're doing all sorts of new stuff in the studio here. So as you can see, um, we are in full on test mode right now. Today I'm testing flip flops as Dwight uh, noticed. Thank you, Dwight, for um, spotlighting my, my feet there. Yes, uh, it's flip flops kind of day, indeed. Welcome, friends. Today, what we're going to be talking about is leveling up your soloing. So, how to take those scales and make them sound, well, more like solos, more like phrasing and that sort of thing. So, we'll talk about tonal center. We'll talk about what kind of scales we might use over those. We'll talk about phrasing. We'll even do some call and response like we did a few weeks ago. You guys really seemed to like that. So I'm thinking that would be a great thing for us to do today. And I'm not sure how long we're going today. I don't know if we're going to do two hours today. We're just going to have to see. we got a lot on the docket. So we may just do an hour today. I'm not sure. No, we are doing two hours because I promised you two hours. So we're doing two hours. Uh, but that means that we're going to get a lot of call and response in today. And then we're also going to be answering a lot of questions from you guys. Thank you, Corey. I love this telly too. I just bought this from Greg Ellis. It's an actually, it's a, it's a Greg Ellis build actually. And uh, it plays beautifully. All right, so what we're going to do, friends, is we're going to talk about some basics, then we're going to get into some call and response, so please make sure your guitar is tuned up. Go ahead and do that now. Make sure your guitar is tuned up, plugged in, whatever it is that you need to do to get it ready so that when I play a lick, you're going to respond, so call and response. And in this case here, you know, usually call and response is someone says something and then you respond, just like you would in a regular conversation, but in this case here, if you're a newbie, what I would urge you to do is try to copy exactly what I'm doing. Because just like we learn how to speak as a child, we learn how to speak through mimicking our parents. It's the best way to do it. We learn, and so many other things we learn from just watching. You get so much information from just watching as opposed to being told. So for those beginners, this is what I want you to do is I want you to try to use your not try, I want you to use your ears, I want you to use your eyes to the best of your ability to see exactly what I'm doing. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I'm doing and then I'm gonna play a lick and I'll play it over like maybe four times, maybe eight times in a row. And even if you hit it, even if you play it wrong, if you're within the scale and you're doing it with your own style, I guarantee you it's still gonna sound nice. Now, for those that are more advanced, then what, I would, what I'll have you do is do your own stuff because chances are the stuff I'm going to be showing you if you're a more advanced player is probably going to be dumbing down your playing. Uh, we don't mean dumb. What we mean is just making it more simple, right? And I don't want to slow you up, but I really want to get those folks that are learning how to phrase, I really want to get them up to speed. And we got to do that by thinking very simply at first, but alas who is possibly the greatest blues player of all time, B.B. King. No one would say that B.B. King was super complicated. No one would say that. He was very, very simple. Go back to even further than that. Um, Robert Johnson or, or whoever. I mean, the Kings, the, the Johnsons, the blinds, everybody who was blind, dear God, they were all blind. I don't know what happened, but they were all blind and they were amazing guitar players, but they thought very simply, right? So I want you to remember that that is most likely the thing that's keeping you from being the great player that you are is that you're trying to complicate things. And the reason I say that, even though I don't know you, is that I've taught enough students and I've read enough comments, not thousands, but hundreds of thousands at this point. I've taught tens of thousands of one-on-one of -on -one lessons, but I've read hundreds of thousands of comments, literally, and responded to hundreds of thousands of comments, and I see the same things come up all the time. So trust me when I say that if you simplify things, you're going to be making life so much easier for you, and you're gonna finally get it, as opposed to trying to complicate things. So when I tell you to simplify something, and I'm telling you something specific to do to simplify it, listen up and do that thing, because you could listen to me all day long and not do the thing, you're not gonna get it, okay? Okay, so let's talk about basics for a moment. When we're talking about notes, talking about notes over chords, essentially, when we're playing in a key, there's a certain structure. As Ford talked about the other day, when you go outside and you're listening to the birds and everything else, 
uh, everything is singing, everything is playing most often diatonically. There's, there's patterns. And the only thing we mean by diatonically is that which is created by the major scale. There are divisions of that major scale or fractions of that major scale that are very symmetrical. Just like if you were to take a circle and you were to cut it in half and now it's a semicircle and you can cut it in a quarter and you have just exactly the quarter of the amount or half the amount. In the same way, when we do this with music, when we divide it in these very symmetrical ways, we end up coming up with the major scale. And alas, 99.9999999% of everything that you enjoy musically has to do with diatonic harmony. Like it or don't like it, it don't matter. It doesn't really care what your opinion is. It's just the truth. So, um, and to entertain that just a little bit more, oftentimes people will say, yeah, but I really want to delve into this or that. And they'll, they'll mention something that's maybe world music or aboriginal type of music, type music. And I'm like, okay, that's fine if you want to do that. That's totally fine. And I love that. Love that you're thinking that way. But at the end of the day, there's no top 10 hits that are aboriginal, okay? So understand that we're not talking about tribal, we're talking about very diatonic, very consonant, very uh, uh, harmonic sounding music. Now we can make it sound inharmonic or we can make it sound um, more challenging to our ear, but right now we're talking about diatonic and even more specifically, we're gonna go pentatonic. We're gonna talk about the five note scale, the blues scale, that sort of thing to be very simple. And once you get this friends, everything else is just colors. Ford was here the other day and you heard the textures that he was using uh, just in solo playing, note, one note at a time. And what he did was, is he was just taking the diatonic scale, but the way that he was playing it and the way that he was having one note rub against another note, maybe he was playing seconds or sixths instead of thirds and fifths and octaves, then that created a little bit more dissonance, but it yet brought a whole new life to what it is that we're looking for. Uh, which is to phrase and sound intelligent when we play. So understand that whatever it is you're looking for is not typically complicated. But if you're trying to complicate it, then you're, it's going to take longer to get to it. I mentioned this expression last night in my uh, live broadcast on, in UGS. So if you're a G UGS member, you'll know we did li three live broadcasts yesterday. Um, those are for folks that are inside of the Unstoppable Guitar System Pro. I do private broadcasts just for them. And one of the things that one of my UGS members um, shared with me, and I don't know if they got it from the military or what have you, but, or no, it was his boss, would say, hey guys, we're running out of time. We need to slow down. And I love that expression because basically, if you're trying to rush through stuff, you're not gonna get it. And it's gonna take you 50 times to get it still you may not get it after doing it that many times if you're trying to rush it. But if you're taking your time and you're allowing your brain to get it in the time that it takes to get it, which in this world, dear God, it's like trying to herd cats. Uh, if you can get your mind to do this, you're going to be way above the cat, the cat herd of people just trying to grab at this YouTube video and that YouTube video and just failing, okay? Doing this stuff step by step, all right? So let's talk about it. Um, you know, if we were to just take a real basic, well, let's, we're just gonna take a chord. How about that? Let's just take a chord today. That's what Ford did the other day, right? It was very simple. And uh, Robbie Calvo also did this same thing inside of UGS, and uh, it's pretty cool. So, now I was doing this bit earlier. Uh, let's see.
I'm doing here is I'm just playing an E, an E, a B, and an E. And in this case, the only thing that I'm doing is playing what I call a unisex chord. It's not major or minor. It's not really saying that it's major or minor. Okay. What that allows us to do is it allows us to play a lot of different notes. We could play in, in the major key or we could play in a minor key. But we know that uh, the E is our tonal center. So let's just do a little experiment here, okay? Now someone asked the other day, can you mix major and minor? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's the short answer. But I like to do them in phrases. So maybe one is a particular phrase that's major and another one's a particular phrase that's minor. It just depends on what we're doing. But I like to keep it to the phrase because uh, to me, if you mix them up too much, then you're really mixing emotions up, essentially. So if I have this playing, and I just play through the E major scale. Let's listen for a minute. Sounded pretty good, right? Sounds harmonic. None of those notes were like really ugly. What I mean by ugly, I mean like this. Right? Now that note, even though it sounds a little ugly, we definitely could use it because it's the flat five, but in context, okay? For the same reason that you like hot sauce, but you may not like your hot sauce on your vegan yogurt, okay? I eat lots of vegan yogurt. Or it's actually vegan ice cream, but I wouldn't like, I love hot sauce, but I wouldn't like it on that ice cream. So context is really important. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. But if I'm just playing the straight up major scale, everything in there sounds good. That flat five didn't sound good in there because right now, again, context or phrasing wise, you have this major scale inside your head, inside your head. Now, if I just take the minor scale, okay, because the chord that I'm playing is not major nor minor, doesn't, I'm not including the third in there, then here is what that might sound like. Okay. Now, what might it sound like if I did the minor pentatonic? Let's listen to that. sounds like minor blues. Now, if you notice, I kind of went through that one note, that flat five, fairly quickly because it is a note that, again, even though it's a little bit of hot sauce, we only need a little bit of hot sauce. You don't need a lot, so I just went by it very quickly. We could rest on it, but it would sound... to resolve, okay? And then if we did, say, major pentatonic, okay, I have an E as my tonal center, it's my chord, and I have an E as the tonal center of my scale, be it major, minor, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, major blues, minor blues. I didn't play the major blues, but well, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so again, as long as we have that tonal center there, that's the main thing. If you don't have a tonal center, you ain't got nothing. And any musician who's improvising knows what the tonal center is. There is no person in the history of ever who has, mm, who, who, how can I phrase this? There's nobody who has ever improvised in the wrong key and then sounded good. Or let's say this, they didn't know the key they were in and sounded good. It's impossible because you're literally, it would be like, you got a speech tomorrow, you got a TED talk tomorrow, 
but you get to guess what the subject matter is. Everybody else knows the subject matter, but you, my friend, get to guess what the subject matter is. Go. And that's if there was only 12 subjects, because there's only 12 keys, uh, or 24 if we're counting all the majors and minors. So, you know, 12 keys. No, just go back to 12. Let's say there's only 12. It, was, it would be as if somebody said that, and then you just need to guess what the matter is, right? What, what it is that we're all speaking about. Everybody else knows you don't know. What do you think the chances of you being very well-versed at what it is that you're speaking about for that TED Talk? Probably not very. So we got to know what our key is. That's very important. So we got that E. We know what our, what our tonal center is. Now we need to say, okay, is it major or minor? And in this case here, we've got that unisex chord, not major nor minor. We can do whatever we want with it. But like I like to say, I, I, like to, I, don't, I don't like to mix the emotions too much in a particular phrase. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Now, sometimes people get mixed up with, okay, Eric, there's 17 forms of this scale. Not really. Usually there's only like five, six, or seven mo uh, modes or versions, forms of a particular scale. And they say, Eric, what about this? What about this? And what about uh, the minor diminished Locrian, flat third, double six, whatever. And they're, they're trying to get fancy. I don't know if they're just trying to trip me up or they really think that there's a magical scale that all of a sudden, if they know it, all the magic's gonna come out. Here's the answer. It doesn't exist. There is no magic scale. It's just a matter of saying what it is that you need to say very simply, but eloquently, okay? Just understand that. Don't look for a magic scale. And the other thing is, is even if we're just talking about the pentatonic scale, get used to using one form of it and get very good at that one form, okay? Because if you can't get used to that one form, why do you think more forms are gonna help? Just like the carpenter who's maybe not used to his hammer, it's not gonna go buy 17 hammers because the one hammer doesn't work like he thinks it should. It could be that he just bought the hammer and he doesn't know how to use it yet probably the case with you because I've never seen it where it was just a matter of someone was in the wrong form or needed another scale to sound good. No. Uh, Marty Schwartz was on the program the other day. He said the same thing uh, you saw uh, Ford the other day and everything that he was doing that seemed very um, complicated, but at the end of the day, he said, it's just a major scale. And that's what I'm telling you. In this case here, I'm saying, let's get even smaller. Let's just talk about the pentatonic, okay? So get, we're gonna get used to one particular form. Now we're gonna go somewhere in a minute. We're gonna do call and response and all that, but I'm trying to get, give you an idea of how, these, how you might go about doing this. Obviously having a looper is very important. Oh, but Eric, I don't have a looper. Awesome, you don't need a looper because you literally are, if you're watching this on YouTube right now, or if you've ever heard of the website YouTube, you're in luck because the only thing you need to do is search one chord vamp and then Type in the chord you want. C, C major, one chord vamp. E major, one chord vamp. A minor, one chord, chord vamp. And you'll get something like this. Some dude did this thing and then put it out on the internet and then you can sit there and come up with these scales. This, friends, is how you're going to get good at this. And there is no other way, okay? There is no other way. You've got to sit there and whittle. Okay, so I'm going to take Let's take the minor pentatonic here. Many different forms of it. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I'm doing as far as which forms because we're going to drill down to a particular form at a time when we're doing call and response and you're going to get the feel for this. But right now, I'm going to be all over the neck, but just understand that I'm just using the, in fact, I'm going to say the minor blues, okay? This isn't a very minor bluesy sounding bit that I'm doing here, but it'll still, we can do some stuff with it, okay? So, this is my tonic, so it's always going to sound good. It's an E. All those sound good. That's home bass. So if I go... It's always going to want to come back to that home bass. It's not to say that we couldn't rest on another note but can you feel it it wants to come back home right totally fine to rest on that
but doesn't that feel like home to you? Okay, that's the number one thing that you can understand about everything that we're doing here is the tonal center. It's step one. Obviously, if that's the only thing we learn, then our stuff's going to be very basic, just like elementary, like like uh, you know preschool kid music, like elementary. Uh, very simple music is what we mean by elementary. And that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the place where we wanna start. And thank you so much for the kind donation. Thank you for, for uh, doing what you do, Eric. I get so much out of these lessons. Yay, love it, Ann. Thank you. So, if you have something like this going on, number one, write this down. This is your exercise. You have your guitar. If you've got a guitar, you're good. And if you have YouTube, this is all you need to do. Find a one chord vamp. There's lots of them. We have lots of them inside of UGS. Just did a, a course with Robbie Calvo, the, fra the phrase trainer. For those that are in UGS, you know about this. Uh, for those of you that just want that one course, it's getting ready to, we're getting ready to drop that. We'll let you know about more about that uh, in the days to come. Yeah, days to come. Not even weeks to come, the days to come, okay? Um, okay, so you can do this. And so here's your homework. Find these one chord vamps. It doesn't matter what chord it is. In fact, the more the better. I want you to just experiment with this. And friends, this is what you're doing. You're taking colors and you're mixing them. And imagine you don't know that green and... Um, that blue and yellow make green. Let's say you don't know that. And you're like, well, I got yellow and I got blue. I wonder what happens if I mix them together. That is what you're doing here musically. As you're saying, okay, I got this chord playing. What might this note sound like? And look, this isn't rocket science. Don't think that more information is going to come to you other than a feeling. Okay? Very, very important. People overcomplicate this. It's literally a feeling. What does this note do to you? <laughs> probably doesn't do much. It probably rests and you're like, well, I, I like that. What does this note do to you? Does that sound very pleasant? Or does that one sound more at rest to you? If you felt something within you or if you were like this, like, ooh, what is that? If you, if you felt that, then you're feeling the right thing. If this note sounded more, more, uh, harmonic to you as opposed to this note if this sounded a little dark a little scary and this one sounded better then you're on your way okay then you are literally getting this stuff okay now my internet dropped so getting it back um, so now what you're gonna do is you're going to take one of these chord, you know, if you don't have a looper, a great way to do it is just with the looper, but if you don't have a looper, then find a one chord vamp, and then you're gonna be good, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna listen to these scales one at a time, really get used to it, and listen to it. Uh, Marine Mama said dark, indeed. And so when you're watching a favorite movie and, uh, and they're trying to build intensity, the guy or gal who's creating that music knows that that interval right there is gonna create a darkness, a dark sound to you. It's gonna stir you up. Why does it stir you up? Let's talk about the science. Absolutely, let's not talk about the science. It moves you, that's all we need to know, okay? If you wanna know the science, basically, it's, it's the same thing as uh, coherence. Um, you know, if a drummer is playing, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, and this is our beat, bump. And the bass player's like, uh, and he's not in sync with the drummer, then that's going to be incoherent. They're not coherent. They're not in alignment with each other. And essentially, when we play a tone like that, it's inharmonic and it's, it's creating uh, pitches together that are rubbing, if you will. Kind of like wearing two different colors that don't match very well. Okay, or if I was wearing a chartreuse shirt right now with pink polka dot pants. Uh, it would actually be, be kind of cool. But nonetheless, it probably would be a little offensive to people's eyes, okay? So you're uh, so what you want to do is you want to take these one chord vamps, or better yet, if you have a looper pedal, do that, but you don't need it. Don't use any excuses to not do this. 
let that thing just play and take a scale and just paint. And the only thing you're doing is you're listening. How does that note make me feel? Where does that note lead me to? Anybody can do this, okay? Anybody can do this. And you could do, you could do it without knowing any scales, okay? You could just go on one string. And I don't, I'm, I'm not even thinking about anything. I could close my eyes and just do this. Okay, that sounds very major. That sounds dissonant. I don't need a degree in music to know. That one sounds better, doesn't it, than this one? Doesn't that sound nice? Let me keep going. Ooh, that one sounds dissonant. Why? I'll tell you why. This is the fifth of the chord. It is a, an ingredient in the chord. So if you're eating a burrito and it's already got onions in it, which are kind of, um, you know, kind of spicy, right? They have a, a particular flavor to it. They don't have a sweet flavor to it, but it's hitting that part of your palate. Then you throw some hot sauce on it. Of course, it's going to complement it. But if you're daggone eating an ice cream sundae, vegan, of course, and you throw hot sauce on it, man, you've got this, this split of what your, what your brain's like, what's going on, right? So... Um, so this is all we're doing is experimenting. You don't have to know anything. Your guitar should probably be in tune. That would be helpful, or at least the one string that you're experimenting on. Let's keep doing this. There's, we're back home there. That sounds nice. That sounds nice. I don't even, I'm not looking at the guitar purposely. That sounds nice. Oh, oh. How does that make you feel? sound good we can resolve it Ford talked about that the other day I'm telling you I swear to God I've seen Stevie Ray Vaughan and other pros I swear I think they hit a wrong note but they were so quick so eloquent at finding their way back that they didn't wince they didn't cry throw the guitar on the ground run off the stage pee their pants none of that happened they just literally kept going and and then I was like, well, maybe I heard it wrong. So they're so convincing. It's like talking to somebody who really knows about what it is that they're talking about. And maybe they, you know, went off tangent for a second, but then they brought it around so quickly that it wasn't, you knew exactly where they were going with it, okay? So this is what you could do. Just do this with one string. Again, you don't have to know any scales, but now let's introduce some scales. Eric, I don't know the pentatonic scale. Awesome, I got you covered. Search your guitar stage pentatonic on YouTube. You're gonna find what you're looking for. I'm gonna show you that. Or the blues scale, or the major scale, or any of these. Just search your guitar stage major scale, your guitar stage blues. I'm gonna help you out with this. Obviously, if you're in UGS, you have all this, plus the PDFs, yada, 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 right? Okay, so now let's take a form. Now, why would we take a scale? And what is a scale? A scale is literally just a set of notes. It's just a set of notes a predetermined set of notes according to a formula, okay? There's a million formulas. There are thousands of scales, probably if we multiply them times the 12 different keys. But realistically, and again, last few people I've had on here would agree with me that really it comes down to the major scale and its derivatives, which are the major scale, the minor scale. If you want to throw a mode in there or think about something as a mode, that's fine, but that's all a derivative of the major scale. Can't go into all that detail right now, but just know that. Pentatonic scale is a derivative. It's a, a, um, a subset of the diatonic scale. The diatonic scale is the um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Of the major scale. Uh, or it's, the, it's the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? And the pentatonic scale is a one, two, three, five, six. So, we, so we're leaving out the four and the seven. But why? Does it, would it matter to you? There is no real, I mean, we, ha, we can say why it is. It's just gonna sound, you know, number one, historically it's just notes that were left out that gave this particular sound. It's only the black keys on the, 
on the uh, on the keyboard. Uh, that's another place that we get the diatonic scale. Uh, also, those notes are just very, very harmonic. Okay, so but just understand that it's a a portion of the major scale. So majors one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. As I teach it inside of UGS standard, friends, if you don't know the formula of this and know how to do this on a single string or across the strings, you need to yourguitarsage.com slash UGS. Go there and get that for free. The first 30 something lessons, it will absolutely change the way you think on guitar and it'll help you in these sessions, okay? So here's the major scale. Pentatonic is leaving out the four and seven. Eric, what do you mean four and seven? Dude, it's like walking up stairs. Stairs. Skip the fourth one and the seventh one. Here's our major scale. Skip the four and the seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Leave out the four and seven. We have one, two, three, five, six, seven. Boom, that's it. That's pentatonic. Don't overthink this. So now, let's listen to the major again. Play different patterns. Here's the pentatonic. Sorry about that. sound so the next step so step two for you would be take your looper pedal I see people asking what's my favorite looper pedal friends I got like uh, seven looper pedals right now I don't care give me a daggone looper pedal don't get stuck in the minutia of all that stuff I promise you don't I know you don't want to know what the best one is there's no best get that out of your head it's limiting you go buy a daggone looper or get on YouTube and follow a jam track don't overthink this stuff. Go get a looper, any looper pedal. I don't care. If you want a suggestion, go get a uh, TC Electronic Ditto pedal. Okay? That's my suggestion. Or go, go to my gear store and you can see that one, okay? The simpler, the better for this. Later on, if you want to get complicated and get a $600 looper pedal that washes your car, then do it. But right now, just get a daggone looper pedal. We want to get the plan, right? Now, so the next so step one is just follow it on one string. Doesn't have to be a scale. The next step is take a scale, pentatonic, major, minor, otherwise, according to the chord that you're playing. So if it's an A minor chord, then you don't want to play A major over it. It's not going to sound good. And we'll talk about that in just a second here. So if it's a major chord, you'll play major over it. If it's a minor chord, you'll play minor. If it's a chord that that doesn't is not major nor minor like what I'm doing here, then you can use either major or minor. But the tonal center is whatever the the root of the chord is, and that should be the root of your scale. So if you're playing a E E5 chord or an E power chord, which doesn't have the, the major or minor interval in it, major the major third or the minor third, then we could play any of those that I mentioned to you. But it does have to be based off of the E, okay? It does have to do that. So now what you're going to do is, in fact, let's go ahead and get more particular here, okay? Um, let's go ahead and take an A minor. Or let's go ahead and take an E major. Let's, let's make that pretty again. have a definitive major sound so if I try to use minor over this watch it's not gonna work so now we've got our tonal center cool now we're gonna talk about is it major or minor that's kind of the next step but 99% of the time you need you need to know both it's not like hey guys what key are we in oh we're in E minor and you're like oh E minor just means E we're in E major E when we say E, we mean E major, but if someone says E minor, it, it, there's, there's separate feels. Think sad and happy. Minor is kind of sad sounding, major is happy sounding, right? So now what you're gonna do, and most of the times when you run across these chords, these one, 
uh, chord vamps, they're going to be in a major, a major chord or a minor chord. So you kind of need to know, am I doing a major blues, minor blues, major pentatonic, minor pentatonic, major scale, minor scale. And you're not going to learn all these at once, so don't get overwhelmed. Just one scale. Go for the pentatonic scale. It's the easiest. It sounds the best. Do that. People have made whole careers on just playing that scale, literally. Very famous people who you know. So, now I got a major. Let's see how the major scale, scale sounds over this. Just real basic. I could get fun with it, you know. major pentatonic sorry I went into major there for, for a second okay, and that one sounds nice too now what happens if I throw minor over this because I know someone out there doesn't know what that might sound like and it's not gonna sound very good so so uh, even though we got the tonal center, the E is correct, it's not going to sound very good if we play something minor over, over it, but let's do it for kicks and giggles. Here we go. See, that note doesn't sound very nice because the note in the chord is this. And we're playing against it, we're playing that note. So it's like we're playing this interval. You don't have to be a musicologist to know. Does that sound pretty? Do you want to eat that? Do you want to smell that? Do you want to step in that? Not me. So you don't need to, to be a rocket scientist to know that that's, that sounds a little bit more harmonic right there because it's the same note. But this, half a step away, it doesn't sound very good, okay? So, now the step two for you is to take that chord vamp, that one chord vamp that you can find for free, millions of them, or lots of them, hundreds of them at least on YouTube, uh, or use your looper pedal, loop that chord, and now play a scale over the top of it and you're gonna do the same exercise. You're just listening, that's all you're doing, is you're just listening. Why are we doing this? Because we're just, number one, it's gonna slow you down to realize that you're not just gonna come out with uh, Beethoven's fifth. It just doesn't happen like that. Beethoven didn't, did th didn't do that. You're not gonna either. And I think the utmost of you, I think you're an unlimited being with all the seeds of unlimited potential in you. But unless you water them, unless you cultivate them, they don't mean jack crap. They're not gonna do anything for you, okay? Um, Al Howard, thank you so much for the donation, buddy. It's all minor stuff, not just in music. It's all minor stuff, not just in music. Nice, I like that. Thank you so much, Al, indeed. Um, okay, my knees hurt, says, I kind of like that sound. Yeah, it's kind of ethereal, it's kind of fun, right? Um, so, and again, what we're doing is we're, we're using different colors. And when we use these different colors, you don't have to, I, and the reason I'm saying all this is because the amount of questions that I get every day from all the different platforms and all the courses that I have out there, we have over a half million people in courses, um, forget about almost 700,000 subscribers on YouTube, you can imagine I get a few comments every day. So, a lot of them. And so, most of the comments that I get, thank you, Emmy, most of the comments that I get are like, hey, can I do this? Is this acceptable? Friends, music is art. Art is subjective, meaning there's no rules. You get to do whatever it is that you want. And then that's the number one thing that I could tell you other than practicing, um, it's to give you that freedom to allow you to, to that liberation so that you know that there's nothing that you're doing that's wrong. 
allow your feelings to take over and do you like it or don't you like it? That's at the end of the day, that's it. You don't have to ask me what you like to eat. You don't have to ask me if you like a girl or not or if you like a guy or not. You don't have to ask me. You know. So you're going on your feelings. Music is that. If you're thinking up in here, you're already in the wrong place. It's not about here. The theory is just explains what it is that we already know intrinsically. That's all it's doing. And we can explain, okay, well, this is why it has that sound, you know. But at the end of the day, you don't, you don't necessarily need any of it um, to, to know it intellectually. You just be able, need to know it in some other way. Like, well, how does it feel? What note, what note am I sliding to? That's all that you really genuinely need to know. But the theory is very helpful, okay? It is. Let me not, I'm not diminishing that whatsoever. So step two is you get the, the loop or you get the one chord vamp and now you're experimenting. You're just listening. That's all you're doing. Do you like it or don't you like it? We've got a major, we've got a major scale here. And this doesn't sound bluesy. It's obviously in a major key, so it's already giving us all sorts of information, right? We're not doing this. We're not going like a... That's already giving us a vibe, right? It's, it's got a shuffle to it. It's up. It's a C. It's a bouncy C, right? It's, it's actually in the key of A. But um, it, it's got that feel to it that all of a sudden is going to change our expression. It's like someone's talking. Someone walks in the room and they're like, Good morning, everybody. How the frick are you doing? Right? You're going to be like, hey, all right. Eric's, Eric's happy today, right? If I walk in and I'm like, like I was yesterday, I was real pissy. And I walk in and I'm like, kicking stuff and what have you because technology's not going like I want it to. Then um, it's going to be a different vibe in the room, right? And in the same way, in, you know, whatever music's being played, if the, if the band's playing a particular something at a particular tempo and a particular key with a particular vibe, uh, it's going to dictate everything that you should be doing on that instrument. So you're not going to be, you, you want to be coherent with them and you want to be speaking the same language. So if they're, you know, if it's a nice tight sound like this, and they're doing a shuffle, and they got that sort of sound and it's real tight, I'm not gonna come in like this. I'm not gonna be like this. I'm not gonna be all vibey and all freaking doors, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to, to speak the same language. So that's what we're talking about here. So, okay, so you got the step two, right? You got the step two. Now, the next thing to do is this, because I know I get this one all the time. Tell me if I'm a mind reader, if this is you. I'm not really, I just know, because I've seen 100,000 questions on this, is people go, okay, Eric, I know my scales, I know all about this, but I can't seem to make them sound like a solo. Well, this is all, all the stuff that we're talking about is this, but, and if you skip this part, you've already, you're, you're already lost. You're not going to make it, okay? I'm serious, and you know me. I'll encourage you, but if you're trying to skip over the important stuff, you're not going to get it. So get the important stuff, okay? Now, let's assume that you're listening to me and that you are doing this and that you've gone through the first 30 that I give you for free at yourguitarstage.com slash UGS, okay? Because I can't help you if you're not learning this stuff, right? So now let's assume you do that, and you're like, okay, I got it, Eric. I went through the one chord vamps. I used my my one string, I did that. I also used some scales, and I got what you're talking about now. I heard some notes that, that rubbed wrong, they just didn't sound good. Whatever emotion, whatever word, that there's no right word to put there. It's just this, just like, mm, don't like it, or mm, I like that, that's all. You don't even have to use the word like, just be like, mm. you know, you're making a face when you make that noise. Uh, this is a diminished chord. In the wrong context, it can sound It can sound quite nasty, but as the second chord in this chord progression sounds quite nice, doesn't it? So it's a major chord, a diminished chord, and a minor seven, and then a dominant seven. So it sounds really nice in, con in, in, in context, right? Okay, so everything has its place, 
what, like I showed you with that flat five, sometimes that note will work. It sure heck works in blues. In fact, it's the basis of blues. In fact, it's one of the notes that makes blues blues. So, you know, the next level up would be, okay, we're, now we're going to recognize, the, so we recognize the, the tonal center, and we recognize, is it major or minor? And sometimes we'll have, uh, you know, most songs are in a major or minor key. You're not mixing the two. Blues is the only thing that I've ever run across. There could be others. I just personally, that's the only one I've ever run across where I can use major and minor at the same time, meaning we're talking about three major chords with a 12-bar blues progression, and I could somehow use the minor blues and the minor pentatonic over it. It's an anomaly, but it is what makes the blues the blues. Also, it has this certain sound. Ford and I were talking about it the other day. If, we're, if I'm playing, um, if I'm playing an A, right? If I'm playing that over the top of it, and I got this note, even though this note almost sounds like it doesn't fit because we're so used to hearing this sound in blues, what we do is we end up bending this note. And maybe I won't use that. Maybe let me just use an A7 chord. Let me just do this. Let me just do this. Um, Now we're talking about a dominant seventh chord, an A dominant seventh, which is a major chord with a flatted seven on top of it, or also known as a seventh chord. So it's a major chord, right? This is an A. This is the major third. So technically that's the note that should be in there. And we can hear that that, that works. But all day long in blues, we can play this note which is a half step off of that. And it sounds like it shouldn't work. But in blues, we can bend it up a little bit. We can mix the major and minor blues. That being said, for the most part, we're either going to be in a major or a minor key any other time. But in blues, we can, we can fudge some stuff a little bit, and we'll talk about that, okay? So now, step three is, you got the tonal center. You have the, um, is it major or minor? But in the case of blues, we can mix it. But that's not something you're just going to learn overnight, and it's not something you're just going to mix overnight. It takes a little bit more, more energy than that, okay? So now you got to know, well, what's the vibe that you're getting? So what's the vibe from the other players? If they're shuffling, then your phrasing will be shuffly, right? It's going to have that feel to it. If, it's, if they're playing at 120 beats per minute, you're not going to play at 130 beats per minute. It's going to sound bad. You're going to be out of time. So there's a coherence that happens, and it's nothing more than just listening. What's the vibe of the room? Eric's walking in, and he's happy today. It's, it's, you know, chances are that will rub off. If I'm pissy, it's going to rub off on other musicians, on other people in the office here. Same thing with, um, same thing with the music that you're listening to. If they're shuffling, you're going to want to shuffle your, your rhythm. Uh, if the tone is very ethereal, like the first thing that I played where there was lots of verb and it was swirly sounding and, and what have you, then you might be thinking more psychedelic and you might try to apply yourself in that same way. Just like walking up to three or four people talking at a dinner party and they're talking about a particular something, if you want to fit in with them, if these are your mentors or these are people that you look up to, you're going to try to fit in and try to speak their language. Otherwise, it's going to be weird, okay? So let's talk more about that. So the step three is, you know, now that you've got the key and you've got, is it major or minor? Now you're trying to, to, to fit in with what is it that you're hearing? And this isn't rocket science. You just experiment. Well, that sounds better than that. Cool. Do that more than, than this. Because that thing, this didn't sound good. That, if this didn't sound good, do the that more. Make sense? Okay. So now uh, I would love to get into some... I would love to get into some call and response with you here, and we're going to do that now, okay? So once we have the vibe and we're going through and we're like, okay, I can get a feel for these sounds, now we need to refine it a little bit more, okay? And 
what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to be very simple here and we're just going to use an A7 chord. That's what we're going to do, something like that or maybe like We're just going to do a little boogie woogie there, okay? Here we go. I need to watch Robbie's uh, phrasing course. Listening. It'll do the trick. All right, so now what we want to do is if I'm doing, if I go like this, if I go. I'm doing is I'm phrasing. So now that I've experimented with some notes, think about a child, right? I say it all the time. A child learns through mimicry, right? Not through breaking open the encyclopedia or studying phonics and having a dictionary. No kid has ever learned that way. We learn from mimicking our parents. So why would music be any different? It's literally notes. When we're talking, we are singing. So for any of you out there who think that you can't sing, you can because when you're talking, you're singing, you're just extending the notes like Will Ferrell from Elf. Literally, you cannot speak and you cannot speak and, and how, should, how can I say this? Uh, I, I can't talk, how about that? Um, if you're talking, you're hitting notes, you're singing. You're just not extending the notes out as long as you would if you were singing. That's all it is, okay? So just understand that. And we learn this stuff from our parents. We learn context. So like the other day, when I was giving my cat some antibiotics, because I forgot why at this point, but something was, she was throwing up or something, took her to the vet, and I was giving, it was choopy, right? You saw her for all 100 hours during the, during the, during the, the lockdown thing. Um, I was giving her antibiotics, and I had to do it uh, in uh, mouth, right, with a, with a hypodermic, just, in her, it wasn't a shot, it was just in her mouth and she had to swallow it. Cats love that, by the way, not. And so I did that and uh, the cat just scratched me, like she did every time. I love the cat, but she, you know, it's traumatizing to them, they don't like it. And I said, ah, oh, a-hole. That's what I said, sorry, I know. And I said, oh God, a-hole. I didn't say the word, A-S-S, I said, a-hole. And Lily, laughed hysterically because of the way that I said it, the context in which I said it. And he goes, ah, a-hole, a-hole. And he ran into the kitchen because I ran to the, to the sink right away to clean my wound. And he goes, I want to see the a-hole. Show me the a-hole. I want to see the a-hole. And he's laughing. And out of all the words that I said, that's the one that stuck out to him because of the way that it, because of my inflection right? Because of the way that I inflected that word. And so, in the same way, that's how you're gonna learn. If you listen to B.B. King and he goes like this, and you're like, what the frick did he just do? Ba -da -da. I love that. I'm gonna learn that. And I'll listen to that. I'll, I'll go and be listening to B.B. King or whoever, and I'll just go, what? how did he do that? What was that? That's not minor blues. That's major Whatever, and then I'll, I'll figure out the math behind it or the theory behind it, and then I could teach it, right? So in the same way, uh, this is how we're learning to phrase. Cool? Okay. So um, there was something else maybe I thought I was going to say about that. No, I don't know. Now, later on, you can uh, study the theory and all the rest, and that is super, super helpful. But in the beginning, it's not very fun, and also it's going to slow your learning way down instead of just listening. Cool? We in agreement? Do you trust me? Come on. All right, so now another, I'm a big fan of this too. 
I've told you this before, that on the guitar, unlike the piano, if we want to play a high E, we can play it right there, or here, or here, or here, or here. It's the same notes. They're all E's. The piano doesn't work like that. If you want a middle C, you go up and you press middle C, that's it. There's not seven middle C's. There's not two middle C's, there's one middle C. That's how it works. So the piano is very different. And so if you're looking at a piece of sheet music and it says to play a middle C, there's only one place you can play it. If on the guitar it says to play an E, boom, there's many places you can play it. Okay, something that's also very important because people think, oh, I need to know all the notes all over the fretboard. Hey, here's a hint. A lot of them are the same notes. So yeah, it's cool that you're doing all that work, but you're doing way more work than you need to do because really you just need to know how to phrase in one little area of the neck and then make that go all over the neck. Have that, that little bit just all over the neck, right? If I'm playing this, That's playing all over the neck, but I really didn't say anything different, did I? Nope. Some different textures there a little bit because I'm playing on different strings, and maybe I'll approach the strings a little bit differently, but alas, it's the same daggone notes, right? So why are we complicating things? So this is why I say don't, don't worry about all five positions of the pentatonic. I have, get this, com this comment all the time, Eric, I know three of them. Should I learn the other two? Is it worth it? I said, do you know how to phrase in half of one of them yet? Well, no. But you think going buying more hammers is gonna help your, your hammer situation when you don't know how to ha hold a hammer? Of course not. You could buy a million hammers. It's not gonna help you learn how to hold your hammer. So learn how to play your one phrase. Now, I'll say, take one, this one position here. These five notes, one, two, three, four, five. Um, essentially, what we're dealing with here is on strings one and two, we are at frets eight and 10, eight and 10, and nine on the third string, okay? Now, the amount of notes that you can play in here are all the notes, you know? All the notes in the blues scale. This is our one, This is our flat seven. This is our five. This is our, um, this was what I say here. This was our five, this is our seven, this is our one. This is our minor three. This is our major three if you want it. Here's our four. Here's our flat five. Right, we could slide up to it or we could Bend up, and here's our, what's this, a, 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 we said a four, a flat five, and our five. There it is again, so. So, get fancy with this, let's talk about it. We, we need to know what our tonic is all the time. I've mentioned this to you. Got to know where the tonic is. 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 If you don't know where the tonic is, you don't know anything because that's where you have to resolve it, okay? You got to resolve eventually. So otherwise, you could be creating all the great phrases in the world and then you just kind of walk off stage. It'd be like saying something great and just kind of fading out at the end and just walking off stage. And it's like, oh, dude, he was getting somewhere and you didn't finish the, the phrase, okay? So we're learning phrases and that means we take a breath. When I'm speaking, there is a period at the end of the sentence and my voice goes down. If it's a comma, then it kind of goes up and it's telling you, hey, I'm not done speaking yet. And that these are little social cues for you to keep listening, right? Right? Goes up at the end, I'm Ron Burgundy, there's a question mark at the end. I don't even have to say question mark like I do sometimes when I'm creating my text messages or whatever, right, question mark. You don't have to do that because the voice tells you that there's a question mark there, right? Yes, okay, so that's the only thing we're doing with phrasing is we're using commas and periods and question marks. 
and emphasis. We're using volume. We're using some speed. But at the end of the day, it really has to do with just speaking something eloquently or intelligently. Don't worry about speed. Speed is way overrated compared to just saying something intelligent, okay? So, where's our tonic here? This is the A, okay? Now, we're gonna do this together. You're doing this with me, okay? So again, eight and 10, eight and 10 on strings one and two, and then on string three, we have our ninth fret. So, just do that with me. Now, now that just, these are just choices of notes. Now, we can also bend or uh, make it cry, just a little uh, flat five, or we can do that too. So no, we'll, we'll probably do some bending there. If you're on the uh, acoustic, then you can slide, or okay, you don't have to bend if it hurts your fingers, that's okay. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to repeat after me. If you're an advanced player, play whatever you want or repeat after me. If you're a newbie, definitely repeat after me because this is where you're gonna learn it, okay? So if I do this, if I go, you're gonna go, if I go, you're gonna go, If I go, you're gonna go. So it goes like this. Me, da da, da da da, you. And then me, da da da, then you. So basically two measures a piece. Me, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you. Make sense? That's all we're doing. And we're going to do this right now. All, how many folks are in here right now, Mike? All together. All together now. How many folks we got watching? We got about 550 people. 550. Sweet, because we're on some different platforms right now, and that's probably not including Instagram. But nonetheless, we got a lot of folks watching. So all 550 of you, we're gonna do this right now. I'm gonna play something, you're gonna repeat it. And this is called call and response. And again, it's just like that child learning from the parent when he says, ah, a-hole. And hopefully that's all they'll say because that kid's gonna remember it and I can guarantee you, no, in fact, I know for sure it's gonna come out again because it did. Okay, cool. Here we go. Here we go. Get ready, this is you. I'm gonna stop real quick because I know there's somebody out there right now who's like, I can't keep up. And that's okay, because I know who you are. Because I just heard what you did. And it didn't sound too bad, to be honest with you, because you were playing in the right key. And that's exactly what I'm telling you, is that don't worry if you are not doing exactly what I'm doing. I can't tell you how many cool licks I've come up with shooting for something else and then ended up fat fingering something and coming up with a whole new phrase or a whole new happy mistake as my wife calls it, songwriter, right? So understand that if you're playing in the scale and at least if you're just playing the basic rhythm and that sort of thing, it's gonna sound good. So stop worrying. Liberate yourself, my friends, stop, okay? This is not technical. We're just having fun. We're just painting, we're finger painting. Would you get technical and be just like, it's all my fingers. Yeah, we're finger painting, bro. Re release yourself from all that, man, and have fun with this. Okay, here we go. Now, with that in mind, play with your heart. Let your fingers follow, but play with your heart. Just do the best that you can. That's it. Okay, here we go. Two, three, four. <laughs>
five been here. Just go for it. Don't overthink it. Come on. Here's a full bend. Bending all the way up to here or slide it on acoustic. Okay, how did you do? How did that feel? Was that super fun? We're gonna go deeper here in just a minute. We're gonna do the whole 12 bar blues progression and it's gonna sound a little nicer and you're going to hear how these riffs can be done over the, the four and the five chord. What we mean by the four and the five chord, if we're playing the major scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, the, the one chord is the based off the one note, in this case an A. And if we play up the scale, one, two, three, four, that's a D, and we're playing a D7. So I'm talking about the four chord, it's a D7. And the five chord, one, two, three, four, five, that's an E, okay? That's what I'm talking about, the one, four, five. And you'll hear that all this stuff sounds good, okay? Now, um, if you like this stuff and you're in UGS, you know I have a whole course on call, call and response. And right now, what I'm doing with you guys is I'm mixing minimalistic blues and call and response, okay? Minimalistic blues and call and response. Because minimalistic blues says, let's just take one little teeny tiny area of the neck. Because guess what? All these licks that we just did. <laughs> another fret could do it right there so literally I mean how many places is that one two three four um, five uh, hold on six seven eight and if I had another fret here I'd have nine Nine places to play the same exact fret all over the fretboard. Guess what? Any lick in the world that's done on like two or three strings like that can be done in someplace else. In fact, if, it, if it, usually the more strings that that lick involves uh, typically will limit how many places that you can do it. If you, if you can do it on one string, just like this, We have many different places we can do it, and that's just the same exact note. That's not even talking different octaves. If we're talking about E, we've got an E here, an E here, E here, um, E here. So many places that, that, that an E is, right? When we're talking about a lick on, on two or maybe even three strings, we can play it all over the neck. This is what I'm saying, friends. We're not talking about rocket science. We're talking about just learning how to phrase with those, same, with those words and, and being able to play it all over the place. My kid, who's four years old now, never opened up a dictionary, never looked at an encyclopedia, and I don't know where he learned all these words. It's almost as if he learned them just from me and my wife and watching TV. And every now and then he'll say, Dad, what is blank? And I'll say, buddy, it is this. So I love that. That means he's getting everything else. He knows it in, by just sheer context. No one is explaining to him what me is. I don't have to go me, you know, you, you, me. I don't, no one has to explain that because it's learned in context. And that's what we're doing here is we're learning in context. So you think that maybe you're just learning one, one, or two notes or one phrase? No, you're not. You're learning the context, which means you're gonna be able to come up with 700 variations of this lick in the nine different places on the neck that we just did it, plus everything else that you're gonna to add to it, it becomes an infinite amount of possibilities. Pretty cool, right? 
No, it was not, hey, Daddy, what's an a-hole? It was not. I know. I think it would be, but. No, I, in fact, when he said that, I said, hey, ho, oh, oh, I hurt myself, hey, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. I did that, and then it, he just, like, I derailed him. He stopped saying it right after that, so. Okay, right? So, now let's do the same thing here, but let's go ahead and do the whole blues chord progression here. <laughs> play this phrase over these phrases over this one bit here and it's going to sound better it's going to sound cooler because the music's moving underneath us but listen to how the phrases sound differently with the background changing right i say it all the time the chords are like the background of what you see right here and me i'm in the foreground and if I'm not changing, but the background's changing, maybe you see this, and then all of a sudden, it's a picture of a war scene, and there's tanks driving by and everything. I, Mike, can you do that right now? No? Can't, just put some tanks driving on the back here. Can you do that? Yeah, no? Just, just okay. Um, so if the background's changing, right, uh, it's going to give you a different feel. It's going to give you a different vibe. So uh, the background is the, is the rhythm instruments, and that's everything. So just what I want you to do is just as you're doing this, you're not doing any, you're not having to think. You're just like, how does it make you feel? That's all. You're just observing, you know? That's all you're doing. And uh, there's something else I was going to say about this. We, you know, maybe we'll do it in some different places on the neck. Oh, I know what it was that I was going to say. There's certain licks that are really specifically for that particular chord. Now, the licks that I'm going to be showing you, because we're trying to make this easy so you can learn how to phrase, take phrase and level up your soloing and start getting this idea of, of phrasing. Uh, once we got that basic concept, then we can start addressing specific chords as they come by, um, like we just talked about with Ford, right? Because oh, if a particular chord progression calls for notes that are maybe outside of that chord progression, then how might you address that? Okay, for, for instance, for instance, when we play a 1-7 chord and a 4-7 and a 5-7, or if you'd like me to say it, an A7, D7, E7, well, each one of those chords as they're being played brings in some other notes, don't they? Yeah, the answer is yes. And so when that note is being played, that's like the background changing. That means that I can play those notes and that they that they're gonna complement the chord. Just like if we're talking with somebody and the conversation changes to a new subject, if we don't change with them, that's gonna be a little bizarre, socially speaking. So I'm gonna change subjects with them, and just like at a dinner party, we're talking about this and that and the other thing, and then change subjects, we all change with it. Oh yes, I did see that show, it was great. <laughs> and then everybody's laughing and happy and what have you, right? Same thing, that's what we're doing here with these chords. So. And we're not going to delve into that quite yet, but essentially we could do that. Like, you know, um, I'll give you an example. On the five chord, you know, we have th these notes right out of the chord. Okay. And let's talk about what those no notes are. It's the major two and the major six. Okay, the major two and the major six. Now, the major two is in the minor scale, and it's in the major scale. It's not in the pentatonic scale. It's not in the minor pentatonic scale, which is what, or the minor blues, which is what we've been playing. So it'd be a brand new note. This note, the major six, is for sure not in there. We're just not using it, because we're playing minor blues. Even if we were playing major blues, the major seven is not thrown in there very often. But Alas, when we come to this chord right here, the 5-7 chord, it's a 7th chord, and it's the 5th note of the scale. The bass note's based off of the 5th note of the scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's why we call it the 5 chord. And it's a 7th because it has a 5-7 in there. 
So when I play that chord, these two new notes that we hadn't heard before are actually being represented, if you will. Okay, so watch this. So when I go to that, you're gonna see me and I'll, and I'll say, hey, alert time, let's go to this. And we're gonna to get to more call and response here in just a minute. I just wanted to mention this to you because we could go further down the rabbit hole, but I don't wanna make this too difficult for you at first because it doesn't need to be. We could, but we don't need to. So let me show you what I'm doing here. So um, I'm gonna play this little, I'm gonna stay in this little triangle here. But when it comes to that, five chord and I'll say five so you guys know where I'm at then instead of playing this I'm gonna go because that's part of the chord but we have but it's only gonna sound good on the five chord okay let's listen here's our five chord watch this My five chord. Did you hear that? So I went because my five chord was played there, and I also went well, during my five chord, but I only did it for my five chord. So we're having a conversation at a dinner party, someone changes it to politics, and I say, Yeah, I hate politics. And then I come back up here. Boom. Now we're not talking about politics anymore. So um, so check it out. Let's do it again. But I love the five chord but I hate politics. So watch, here we go. Here's my five chord. Okay, so that's just an example. But, I mean, let's think about this. Here's my four chord, and I got this note right in there, not played normally in our, um, in our minor blues, because it's just not in there. Uh, normally minor blues is like. We're not playing this note. But it's in there, and it's the six. It's the, it's the major six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll identify it as the six, but it's played for that for that four chord, the D7. So let's listen to that and let's see how we can do something with let's see if we can do something with that, okay? Let's go um I went something like that, right? So it sounded nice over that. Let's see if it sounds good over the one chord. Well, it's kind of in your ear now, so we'll come back to it the second time around, because right now it's in your ear. You're going to say it's fine. Let's see what it sounds like the second time around. It might sound good. I don't know. sound so hot so let's not do that again so but alas and we're gonna get to the simple stuff now we're gonna do call and response again but I just wanted you to see that sometimes a new chord will come along and we can tip our hat how you doing my lady type of thing just to say hey I recognize you I see you uh, Emmy's shaking her head right now because it just doesn't sound correct but uh, uh, but you get the idea. What we're doing is we're recognizing a chord there and we're saying, hey chord, I see you, I see you. In fact, I'm going to tip my hat to you type of thing. Which is the only thing you're doing is you're playing a note out of it because it's there, it's in the foreground, or it's in the background, so why not play in the foreground? If you're bored and you're running out of notes. Otherwise, we can stick to the basic stuff here, okay? So now let's do this. But what I'm going to do is, with you is I'm going to show you that is the same stuff we're just down an octave an octave is the same notes right so if we're playing a scale here's our one if we go eight notes up hence the name oct 
If you're German, or if you've ever seen an octopus, it has eight arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight scale steps up from this, and we can also find it through my octave springboards and everything else, right, that I show you guys, okay? Okay, so let's use, we're gonna be down in this area of the neck now. Okay, but we're not gonna be representing chords and everything because it just it's it's harder to do only because number one it's more for you to keep up with. But then also if I'm playing it and then the chord changes, it's not gonna work, right? Because the chord's changing when you come on, then it's not gonna be the same. So we're still sticking to some basic riffs here. Okay, we're not recognizing or tipping our hat to the, each individual chord here. But we are moving to a different part of the neck. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Get ready. Now, what we're doing here is five, seven, five, seven on the two middle strings. Five, seven, five, seven. We might even come here to that seventh note, seventh fret on the A string. Okay, here we go. times how about that Make sense? You guys could do this all the live long day, all right? And if you want more of this, obviously inside of UGS we have that whole call and response bit. And I think I've got some call and response bits here on YouTube as well, if you'd like to see that. Steven, thank you so much for the kind donation. Sweet brother. Let's get to some questions here. So someone said, uh, why wouldn't you just slide up to, Brad said, for the five, why wouldn't you just slide, slide up to the, to the uh, 12th fret on the first string. Yeah, you could do that for sure, Brad. What I was doing was bending. Yes, you could do that. But that's a predictable note, and it's a note that's in the scale already. So that's the reason why I didn't do that, because it's the, I mean, it's right there. It's in our scale, right? That's the E. So, that's why I, I didn't say, but we could do that, and that w and Brad, that's good. You're recognizing the note, and and I always say, if you want to start, in fact, let's go there a minute, Brad. Thank you for for reminding me. Let's do this. Let's do 101 of representing the chord that's being played, and this is easy as done with blues, but we can do it with anything. And uh, so what Brad's saying is, well, why, you know, he's saying, why wouldn't you just slide up and play that E? For the five chord, which the five chord is an E, it's an E7. So you're recognizing it like that. And I did, I bent it. But the reason I was saying use these two notes is because they, we haven't used them yet and we're bringing in another spice, another color. Why not do it? Because we can do it on that one chord. So let's bring in something new, right? Let's change it up. Variety is the spice of life. So let's do that. So, but let me show you a little trick, what I call chasing the chord. And I think this is best done when you are following the root note of the chord. So if it's an A chord that you're playing, play an A. If it's a D chord you're playing, play a D. And if it's an E chord you're playing, play the E. This is kind of intro 101 
to playing color tones of the chord. In this case, we're just playing the tonic, so it's not super duper colorful, but it 100% will sound like you know what you're talking about because just like someone who's leading you in a conversation or a dance, how about that, right? When you learn to dance, the man typically leads, that's the way it's been historically, and so the, if you've ever taken dance, which I have before, not a whole lot, but I have, I've taken swing dancing and some other ballroom dancing and stuff like that, but nonetheless, the lady will, she'll move, but there, it's not like they're just like floppy, but, but there is a sense of the man will move her around. If so, so if they're gonna be a spin, he'll lead her and uh, a good dance partner will, will follow suit, but still remain, you know, it's, it's a whole thing. And so essentially that's what we're doing here is we're dancing with the chords. When it goes to that four chord, you know, that four chord is leading you, dancing-wise, and you should be following it because the band ain't gonna change for you. They're doing their thing. They're playing a four chord. You should be following them type of thing, okay? So, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's the one, here's the four, here's the five. We could do it here, too. Here's the one, here's the four, here's the five. Oh, I'm sorry, um, here's the one, here's the, here's the five. One, four, five. So it's kind of the, the whole springboard thing that I show you, okay? One, four, five, that's what I'm gonna be doing here. So notice that for the one chord, I'll emphasize this note. For the four chord, I'll emphasize this note. And for the five chord, I'll emphasize this note. I could either bend to it or I could slide to it. I'll tell you if I'm gonna bend to it, okay? So here we go. Resolving on it. Here's my four chord. One, I'm back to the one. Here comes my five. Here's my four. Think about it that simply. Here's my one chord. Okay, I know light bulbs are going on for you guys. Friends, if light bulbs have gone on for you in this, say so right now. Please, give me a hell yeah, or give me a yeah, or give me a light bulb, or give me something so I know that I'm not alone on an island here and that you guys are getting this, okay? All right, now, hopefully, um, does my chat look, oh, I don't, you guys can't see my chat, but am I, am I, am I current? I guess I need to know if I'm current, if I'm gonna be asking folks questions. Yes. That's current? Okay, awesome, thank you so much, Em. I should probably turn that toward you guys. All right, let's get to some questions, okay? Beautiful, okay, Juan says yes. All right, let me know if this stuff helped. And friends, very quickly, if when I'm talking about numbers, when I'm talking about some of the essentials, these are, these are base level things that I'm talking about. They're not real like big, big, baby beginner stuff, but, but, but we're not too far out of the beginner stuff. So if you're not getting this, it's okay. All of us in here, everybody in the chat right now who's saying hell yes and all the rest, every single one of us did not know how to do this. And it's just a matter of getting the information and then applying the information, and then boom, bingo, bango, jango, you're doing it, okay? But there's a day where you don't know it, and then there's a day where you know it. So it's okay if you don't know it. If you don't know it, take advantage of the daggone free course that I give you. I would teach you the same stuff here in Nashville, and it would cost you way over a thousand bucks to teach you the same exact stuff that I give you for free, plus I'm giving you the PDFs and all the rest, okay? 
yourguitarsage.com slash UGS. I think it's the third link below, but just look for something that says yourguitarsage.com slash UGS, okay? Beautiful, light bulbs going on. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you so, so much. And did I miss, I did miss another donation from Metalhead Hippie. Peace, Eric, work is calling, AFK, uh, later people. Thank you so much, Metalhead Hippie. Love the name, beautiful. And, okay, so I missed that one from earlier. Yeah, and did I miss another one here? Just that one. Uh, just that one, okay, beautiful. All right, and Marine Mama, 62. Thank you, Marine Mama, so kind. Okay, lots of oh yes. Someone's dab in there, beautiful. Someone's holding up some sort of herb, herbal remedy or something, I think. Oh, you got this. Still, some sort of herbal something. I'd like to know what it is. Um, okay, beautiful. Okay, let's dig in. Let's get to some questions. This is your opportunity, friends, to anything that we're talking about here or anything in general on the guitar. If you can make it more about this, that's even cooler because it'll help everybody else. But chances are, if you're asking the question, it's not a dumb question. Um, and chances are somebody else is gonna benefit from it too, okay? So let's dig in here. And I'm gonna go back just a little bit to see if anybody had a, a question that I might have missed, okay? And we have the ability now to, uh, to put this on the screen. Hey, Em, if you can turn my computer around, I'm sorry, I need to do that for Mike next time so he can see, so he can post these on the screen. Oh, sure. Thank you. So yeah, Brad, thank you for saying that about sliding up because that, that spawned me talking about following that chord. Very important thing to do. And I think I have a video for that on YouTube. I think it's called like chasing the chord or something like that. Okay, hmm, interesting question, Eddie, and I'm gonna have to analyze what you're saying there. Frank, thank you, buddy. Learning and fun, yeah, thank you, bud. So if the blues, if the blues is minor, the one and four are acceptable to, to play minor pentatonic over. When the five is playing, plays uh, the major pentatonic, true. Um, well, here's the deal, is that technically, the major one, the major four, and the major five are all in line with diatonic theory where our one and our four and our five are major, the two, three, six are minor, right? So it's totally in line there. The stuff that's not in line is the fact that they're seventh chords and not major seventh, seventh chords because the one and the four should, should technically be major seventh chords. Uh, but that being said, let me analyze this real quick for a second. That's fine, that note's in there is fine. Yeah, there's no reason, uh, even with even in regards to that, that we shouldn't technically, theoretically, be able to play the major blues over it. There's no reason. And in fact, you know, when we're talking about the difference between major and minor, the major scale has a major third, a major sixth, and a major two in it. Whereas when we're playing the minor blues, it doesn't, we're not including any of that in there. So if we wanted to make it sound major, we can add the two, the three, and the six. Now the, the three is easy because we're just talking about that one chord there. We're talking about playing it major. So we did that with the bends. You know, if we did, you know, that's our, that's major right there. If I did that, that would be, we're, we're throwing in a note and making it major now. This would be minor. If I went like this, if I went. It sounds best over the one. So, and the other bit is throwing in the, uh, the two and the six. So here's the six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here's the two. Right, here's the one and the two. So technically, that's gonna sound really good. So you could do something like, instead of this, drop it down, one, two, three, 
and you can come kind of now here's our one but if we're playing this little riff down here which is the same bit minor major we need to remember that our tonic is not here anymore it's here and that's the number one thing that I find from teaching this to, to, to players that they get that they stumble with because they try to play their riff and they resolve it there well that's not gonna sound good listen but this would sound good Important that that's our one and this is our one, but literally, if you wanted to add that major two and that major six, there you go, right? And then you got the major three right there. So that'll sound nice. So, um, so I don't understand what you mean by you know, should you could you play the, the the major pentatonic over the five? Yes, you can, but then you can also play it over the one and the four. Okay. All right. Good, good. Yeah, that's the Almond Brothers sound. Yeah, a lot of folks do that, and uh, it's it's big in Southern fried type music and and blues, but mainly like country blues, you know. Oh, thank you so much, Bay Street. Eric, this is very kind of you. I know you got to make money giving lessons, so there's no telling how many people you are helping for free. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Bay. I appreciate that. John, uh, Johnny is saying, not theory related, but something I'm dealing with right now. When I play standing up, I want my guitar to hang a little lower so I don't look like a, a, a jabroni. A jabroni. Uh, but it kind of hurts my wrists. Any tips? Yeah, Johnny, you will get used to that over time. All the punkers had to as well, because you're holding your hand in a, in a, you know, you're holding your hand in a weird way. So it'll get, you'll get used to it. But you can also keep that guitar down and and play like that. I mean, you watch um, dude from uh, Green Day. That's how he, you know, his guitar. He's like it's down, but I mean, sometimes he'll he'll bring it up like this. So his hand's still not in that uh, in that position. Oh, Corey's here, my friends. Uh, Corey, thank you. Yeah, this is a, um, a Greg Ellis build, and I just bought this, and it, it's absolutely amazing. I love it, love it, love it. I kind of love it even maybe more than my 67. He didn't say that, did he? I did. I know. So in A, you can play pentatonic number one on either the fifth fret minor or the C3 frets up for major, right? Uh, or uh, on three frets up, or start on C, three frets higher for major. No, I know where you're going though. No, uh, other way around, thrash metal. So here's the deal. So technically, here's our here's our minor blues or minor. Let's say minor pentatonic. <laughs> We wanted to play major. This is what we're doing. Pay attention, friends. This is true for every key. Every major key has a related minor. Every minor key has a related major, and it just means that they share the same notes. Okay, but what we're doing here is we're doing what's called parallel major and minor. And essentially, we still have a tonal center of an A, but in this case, we've been using minor blues or minor pentatonic, right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna use major blues or major pentatonic, and it's so easy, anybody can get this, but don't overthink this. Watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play the same form, or I should say my all my notes end up being in the same exact place. But the way I play it can be the same exact way, but it's gonna even sound better if we, if we start on the A. So what I mean by that is this. If I'm playing this form, <laughs> Start on the A, end on the A. Now, if I take that exact form 
and I put my pinky right here and I play the exact form. Okay, so it's the same form. I did one, three, or one, four, one, two, three, one, three. One, four, one, two, three, one, three. Cool, one more time. One, four, one, two, three, one, three. And then what I'm doing is I'm putting my pinky where my first finger is, and I can play one, four, one, two, three, one, three. But usually, for the sake of playing a scale, we will play it from its, from its root note to its root note, so from A to A. But don't let this throw you off that you could play that note if you wanted to. You could play that F sharp. So technically, we should be able to play that over a one, four, five. I mean, they're major chords, so let's listen. Does it work? same thing so now we're playing major blues but this is where people get hung up I feel is that they don't know how to resolve it I can tell you that was my problem I was always trying to resolve it here because that's normally where you resolve it when you're playing blues and I was like well why didn't that work everybody says you just do move it down here and I did that and they didn't tell me the other part that well you got to resolve it in the right place so that's that's how you can do that very very easily okay okay Okay, so someone's saying, can you explain how to use modes? And um, here's the deal, modes. Uh, you know, talking with uh, Ford here the other day, Corey will say the same thing, I'm sure. You know, most guitar players, they, don't, they, they learn the modes early on in life because they think that's going to change their world, and then it doesn't. And it, it has, you, you're not playing in modes. How can I phrase this? You're not playing in modes very often. I mean, sometimes you'll use the mixolydian, but again, if you say that, now you just lost a bunch of players. So I'm coming from the teacher perspective. I'm trying to keep people having fun and playing the guitar. So when you say the word mixolydian, you might as well be throwing out a binary code for the word mixolydian, and now you just lost people. So, so I don't say the mixolydian. I mean, I can, I can say it, but at the end of the day, it's a major scale with a flatted seven in it. So just when it comes to that chord, you know, if you want to play that note, play that note. So my friend, I can tell you, and I appreciate the question very much. I really do. And I, and I, and I appreciate that you're, that you're, you know, asking about that, but that's not where your answer is. Unless you absolutely love jazz, if you're hardcore jazz and you really just want to be like, man, I'm a jazzer, it's all I want to do, I got to know the modes, then study the modes. But if you like rock, if you like blues, and you like these other styles, that is a stone you don't want to unturn because it's not, because there's nothing under it and it's, and it's just a lot of work for you and you will have nothing to show for it because it's not going to make you a better player. However, you understanding how to use your pentatonics using the major scale, the minor scale, and really just the pentatonic scale. You could, do, you could have a whole career just using the pentatonics in the right way. See Tom Petty and see a bunch of people for that one, you know what I mean? But yeah, you want to know the modes? Here you go. Here are the modes in a nutshell. Take the major scale. That's the major scale. Play it from two to two. So this is G major pentatonic, or this is G major. If we played it from two to two, now we have the A Dorian. It's also known as the G major scale. Now if we play that same scale from three to three, now we have the Phrygian, the Phrygian scale, the B Phrygian scale, also known as the G major scale. So in order for these modes to actually become a mode, we would have to move them back down. So for instance, you learn your forms, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, and then you learn your Dorian form. But for that to be G Dorian, I'd have to drop it down. So here's G major, here's G Dorian.
right? So you'd have to all relate it to the actual center note, to, the, to your tonic. But a lot of people don't do that, and when they're explaining it, they'll just lose people. So my job is to keep you playing guitar, and I'm telling you, don't go near the modes. Unless, and here's the other reason that I know this, is when somebody asks that, most players who are high-end players aren't going to be asking about the modes because they understand it. So it's a, it's a question that a lot of beginners ask because they think that there's a Pandora's box that, that says modes on it. And once you open that box, oh my God, here comes all the beautiful music. And it's just not true. So that's modes in a nutshell, but I know that probably doesn't help you because modes, you, you, you're just not gonna use them very often. I'll use the Dorian sometimes, which, you know, I mean, uh, technically we could analyze, if we throw in the major two and the major six, we could analyze all this as the Dorian. But literally, I can hear people starting to go at home. I can hear that because when you start talking like that, we're not feeling anymore. Now we're up in here, right? You're in your head, you're dead. Music is from the heart. It's from the heart. And so if you start getting too analytical, you're going to lose all the love. You're going to lose all the reasons that we, that we listen to music. I don't know about you, but when I'm listening to a symphony, I'm not like, Ooh, it's just a diminished, that was a diminished chord, wasn't it? It was very nice. <laughs> a little bit out of pitch there, but hmm. anyhow, I'm not like sitting there analytically thinking about stuff like that. I'm like, oh my God, just listen to that. You know, it's like I'm purposely trying not to. When I went to music school, went to music school for three years before I changed my major, I was analyzing everything like that. And it was good for a moment in time because I learned a whole lot. But I literally had to go, dear God, son, like, you got into this because you love music. So like you're not, now you're just analyzing everything. And that's, I found myself doing that, but I'm sitting there writing, uh, you know, having to write an atonal symphonic piece for an orchestra. It's like, you kind of get, got to have to get a little tick, uh, technical. You can't sit there and just feel that you got to be right. And I'm, it's in five and it's in 11 and I'm, you know, we're doing all these crazy things, but uh, you know, you want to, as much as you can feel, the better. All good things and all good time. In, indeed, yes. Also, again, going back to the very beginning of the program, this has been a good broadcast, friends. This is one that you will want to share with other people. In fact, if you haven't done that already, like this right now, share it with other people because I brought you from the very beginning of this. Um, when we had Ford on, he's such an amazing player, but I know some of you guys got lost because he's, he's in the stratosphere there, and there was a, a, a little bit of a, a, a space there that we needed to get you guys up to. So I know he lost some of you. Some of, some of you got some great stuff from it. I sure, I sure did. He's an amazing player. Um, but this program, we've, we started from the very beginning there, and we, I brought you up here. So uh, share this one if you haven't already. Also like it, subscribe, notification bell if you would, okay? Thank you so much. Fun fact, trained musicians use a different part of their brain when listening to music. Interesting, Wayne. And I bet you that would also uh, have to do with how they're listening to the music. Because I can listen to something analytically and I can be like, okay, now what chord is that? I can hear it's borrowed. It's not from the regular key. Uh, Sam Phillips, who used to be married to T-Bone Burnett. Before that, she was a Christian artist by the name of Leslie Phillips. And she is a diamond... Uh, that is just hidden, that people don't know about. She's an absolute beast, amazing songwriter, and I've listened to her for years, and I love what she presents. In fact, at one point, she was my favorite artist, and I don't say that very often because it was a s small section of time that I absolutely consumed everything that she did, but she did a lot of borrowed chords and that sort of thing, and when I, would, when I was, that was a time in my life when I was listening to all this stuff really intently and, and what have you. So I'd say that, that probably that, that part of your brain is different uh, when you're in that mode, but there's other times where I'm just listening and I'm not trying to analyze anything. And I really try to be that way as much as possible because I'm there to enjoy it. If I'm teaching a lesson, obviously I need to analyze it so I can, you know, so I can relay that information to you guys. <laughs> Brian, I know, right? People scheduling work in the middle of the day, Thursdays at 1 p.m. They should know that we have a broadcast going on. 
Okay. Hi, I'm from New York. I would like to know the progression of the last four bars in the blues. Is it, uh, you got it. It's the second one, 54-15. So we got the uh, five, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Okay. So even though we're, we're kind of hidden in there with some different rhythms and stuff, essentially we're like, uh, five, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. Or in the case of chords, if you don't know the number system, which is super easy, watch my videos on it. Uh, we're talking D, two, three, four, I'm sorry, E, two, three, four, D, two, three, four, A, two, three, four. E, two, three, four. But the reason that we're using the numbers, friends, is because that's only in the key of A. So if we say that, then you're stuck to the key of A. But if you know 54, 15, the way I teach the number system, then you can do this in any key and you're not stuck and you know the theory. Like I say all the time, a general in the military uh, is very intimidating if you are below them and they are upset with you. But in shark-infested water, the term general means nothing to a shark. So titles in that way don't mean anything, right, in different circumstances. Same thing with a chord. A chord in the key of C is a, a C chord in the key of C is a one chord. In the key of G, it's a four chord. In the key of F, it's a five chord. So we're talking about a C, and that's fine for playing the song. Just tell me the chords. I just want to know the chords. That's fine, but if you want to start going another level deeper in understanding music, if you understand what that chord represents, so in the, in the key of C, it's a one chord. It's the center of the universe. It's the, or the center of the solar system. It's the sun. And if it's a, a four chord, then it's, it's a different planet or whatever. It has a different role, if you will. And so understanding that from a number standpoint is very, very helpful. That's why I implore everybody to study that a little bit, okay? Neil, thank you so much. You've set me straight on more stuff than I can name here, Eric. Woo, yay, thank you, Neil. I uh, love that. Thanks so much. What good beginner blues fingerstyle songs do you recommend? Hmm, well, Neil, if you're in UGS already, well, and this would be slide fingerstyle, but uh, RJ teaches a great version of Dust My Broom, which is like a basic, um, it's a basic, 12 bar blues progression, but using it finger style uh, and slide. And it is absolutely amazing. It sounds great, but I'm sure that you could, that you could learn that one as well, not slide, because it's just basic 12 bar blues. So you could do that. And that is uh, originally done by, um, oh, man, I was just listening to him. Elmore James, I believe. I believe he was the original who did that. All right, good stuff. The Daily Shark reference, yeah, right? I know, I've got a few. <laughs> it's just like a lick, you know? It's like you go, you pull that little thing from your brain, you're like, oh, I got that lick or I got that analogy, it'll fit good here, you know? No need to make up a new one every time. Is there any connections between the minor notes and the flat notes? Maurice, in context to how they appear in the number system, yes. But as far as when you're talking about A sharp, B flat, that sort of thing, no. No relation whatsoever. None. But we could take a major scale, which is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, because it's the de facto benchmark measuring stick or square that the carpenter would use as a musician, we need to know the major scale. So a major scale is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. There's no altered notes because it's the de facto. It's everything we measure it is based on that. But the minor scale is a one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven. So, so in that way, we're, we're flatting those notes from the major scale. But, you know, it would depend on what key you're in that would determine whether it's a sharp or flat in, in that specific key. This is why, again, it's like it's fine to know that. It's helpful to know what key you're in. But once you know that, it's, it's helpful to know 
notes as they are based upon an, the intervals and their relationship to the tonic, just like the general in the water with shark infested, uh, shark infested water, he could be saying, I'm a general, I'm a general, ah, don't bite my leg. And they're gonna be like, I don't speak English or really anything for that matter. I work on electronic impulses and your leg smells good, boom, it's gone type of thing. You know what I mean? So it's a totally different vibe. It's good to know the number system, suffice to say. All that, it's good to know the number system. <laughs> Rich has been out of the military for 20 years. I think a general would still intimidate me. Indeed, unless you were a shark. I have a music theory book that refers to the five pentatonic forms scales as modes. Screwed me up for a week until I compared it to the notes with Eric uh, and determined it was the same. Yes. So yeah, some people can get lost just in the, the nomenclature. And I've heard that before. I've heard the different forms of the pentatonic. No, they, they refer to them as modes. Uh, but I've only heard that twice in my life and it was from the chat here. My knees hurt. That was one of my favorite songs, Fast as a Shark. I cut my teeth on some except for sure when I was a kid. All right, friends, here we go. We've hit the two hour mark. So I know I didn't get to a lot of questions today, but the point of it today is I really wanted to infuse this knowledge to you guys. I really wanted to get you guys to understand this, level up your plan. If you need more help with this, friends, you know I have like 1,300 videos on YouTube here. But the real Quan is inside of UGS. In fact, if you're in UGS, if you're in UGS 30, please right now let, no, let folks know and just write the number 30 and give a thumbs up or something. Only write it if it's helped you, if it's absolutely revolutionized the way that you've played. I'm not asking you to do anything that, uh, that you're not moved by. But if, if the 30 lessons that I give out for free that you can find at yourguitarstage.com slash UGS. If those have absolutely changed your life, please write the number 30 in the chat right now so folks can see it. If you're in UGS Pro, just write GoPro so people know that you're in there. And if that absolutely changed the way that you think about the guitar, please do that. Let other folks know that we're not playing around here, okay? You have the seeds the, the seeds of unlimited potential inside of you, but they aren't gonna do jack crap if you don't practice and you don't cultivate them, okay? All right, I love you guys. Great questions today. For those that donated, thank you so much. Thank you uh, to my crew who rocked it today. Love you guys, and we'll see you next week.